Alex, the motherfucking CEO. What's your last name, by the way? Morales. Morales? Morales. What ethnicity is that? Uh, Hispanic. Hispanic? Half okay. Hispanic, quarter Armenian, then other quarters, like a bunch of random stuff. Gotcha. Did you, uh, did you grow up in Los Angeles? I didn't. I grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah? So Santa Rosa. And is, so you're saying, that, wait, the Bay Area, that would be right next to San Francisco, right? Correct. Okay, I've never like been up 40 there. 40 minutes north. Gotcha. Super pretty, wine country. Very, like, just kind of boring. I don't know. It's it's more for older people. Yeah. For sure. And why were you, why were you like, growing up there? Like, why were your parents it's just up where there? My, yeah, where my family was. And, like, just, I think it's a great place to raise kids. Yeah. But once you become 18, 19, like, you're either doing drugs or you're, like, it's just one of those burnout places, in my opinion. Gotcha. But I love it. And, like, I like going back there. It definitely, like, humbles me. Going yeah. from, like, L.A. to, like, a nice, wholesome place. So Yeah. So I guess we should preface this a little bit. We're in the Cookies and Kicks store on You're Melrose here. Avenue. We are. And I am so excited to learn your story. I was talking to you about this before. Yeah. Because you're a very interesting person. And I've been, I've been observing, yeah. but I've been hesitant to ask because of this moment right, right here. Right, right. So I'm so excited to Let learn. it all out. Where did this all start? You said it was in Sa San... Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yes. What age when you... Sneakers. Yeah, when it comes to sneakers, when did you first like start? And I would say, what sneaker was the beginning of this okay. all? Okay, so I would say it was 2000. Well, so like middle school, I was interested in sneakers, but obviously I wasn't old enough to have a job and like able to afford those sneakers and stuff. Yeah. But 2012, it was the Bread 11s. And uh, I remember I was just like, I was a creative kid, like always found ways to make money, like, you know, whatever it was. And I saved up and I bought the Bread 11s and then I wore those. I think that was freshman year of high school. Um, and that's like kind of what started it for me. I was a consumer first. Yeah. And, you know, like I started working at this little restaurant. It was like a fish and chips place. And like, dude, it was like disgusting. Literally like making the tartar sauce. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I swear to God, like, oh, it was horrible. But like taught me so much i was like well that was my second job my first job was with my mom she fired me i was like doing oh, filing and fired shit. by the mom fired by the mom um but yeah i was doing that working at the restaurant just saving up spending my money on sneakers like i didn't really have many expenses and uh yeah that's where it started i just fell in love with sneakers fell in love with wearing them and just like always having cool shoes on and that's where it started. And before I ask this next question, I'm just going to move this like oh, yeah. right here. That's going to be got you. perfect. So you got the bread 11s and everyone and you're that's when you first found like the feeling. Right. You know, you know, the feeling like right, right, on right. Those fresh new shoes. You just love them. And it's like an addiction. Yeah. So is this after the bread 11s, you said you're saving up money at working, working. at this restaurant. Uh huh. And how did you transition? Like, when did you first start so, flipping in? Right. At shoes in so sort of a flip. monetary so yeah that so i was or i was wearing them i was working really hard like just buying sneakers and then i was like 16 16 and a half it was time to get a car and i had probably like 20 pairs of jordans that i would just like wore over the years and oh, not I even started, the flip no no no. yeah just, straight consumer okay, okay like just love sneakers so i started getting rid of them one by one to like recoup money to get my car and like shoes that i'd worn for like a year two years i'm making money on Gotcha. And that was just like, that's where it clicked. And I was always like, I had always had like an entrepreneur mind, like, you know, and then I found something that I love, realized I was making money on it, yep. got my car. And then I was like, okay, what still, car did you get? it was a G35, like the, oh, yeah. the basic high school, like infinity classic, right? The G35 right, right. classic. Um, and then just like kept doing that. I was still more so a consumer, like got my car still made money so i was like okay you know i can buy my shoes again um and then really when i turned it up is when i graduated which was 2016, 2016. so I graduated high school so you're two years older than me oh really yeah i'm 2014. okay yeah so you're 22 you're two years older than me you're 22 i'm 22. okay i just turned 25. okay gotcha. i'm about to be 25 in a few months um 23 i mean gotcha. okay. but yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and then graduating, that's when I really turned it up. I hated school. I hated it so much. I feel like, that. I feel like everyone's a good student up until like middle school. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's like, oh, I was like the best student. But like, I really just like, once I hit like middle school and then high school, it was like, 
D's, C's yeah. were the best thing I could get. And uh, like, I think I graduated with like a cumulative like 2.1 GPA. Yeah. Just like that's, hated it, right? That was my exact GPA in yeah. college. Right, right. <laughs> I love 2. it. 2.1 squad. Dude, it's fucking sick. <laughs> um, and then, you know, it was like the typical, like I had the English teacher that was like, oh, like you want to act like this. This won't work in the real life. You know, like I just yep. like you have something inside you that's like, I have something to prove. Mm -hmm. you know and like miss stevens you're amazing <laughs> I thank you for that um and after i graduated i had like a bunch of pressure like go to the jc whatever like fall into that hole like the small town hole of like you go to the jc what's the jc junior college oh okay like it's literally like just such a small town it's like it's like a little movie mm -hmm. um so i i was gonna do that but i was like no nah, i'm not gonna do that Took my graduation money, went and just bought shoes. I was buying new shoes. I was going to like Foot Locker, Shoe Palace, like waiting outside, doing all that. And then I realized that the first hand market, like getting them for retail, there's only so many pairs, obviously, because they're right, limited. Right. And I was like, okay, how can I make this work? And I was like, well, I made all my money to buy my car off you shoes. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to start buying you shoes off like my friends or like people I know or whatever. There's like forums for the community. Right. Um, so I was buying you shoes and I was so into the hustle, so into the grind that like I would buy the you shoes, clean them up. You know, you're literally cleaning your margin. Like yeah. you're going to make so much more money. Take so. some nice photos. Yeah. Take photos, whatever. Put them on Facebook. That was like a big thing. Facebook. Um, and that's like where I really started. Just like the pre-owned shoes, clean them. You know, sometimes I'll like restore them, make them look pretty. And then I would just sell them there on Facebook, my friends, whatever. And then just kept doing that um i was so like i was just so into it like sometimes yeah. i wish i could have like that hustle back because like obviously you start to feel comfortable at times oh, right of course yeah and you think back like wow look what i did to like get to this point mm -hmm. and like that drive was just insane and like i was doing doordash like out if i had a quota every day and like if i didn't make that amount of money i'd literally hop on doordash and start delivering orders like, wow i just was so so into it and so this is the year 2016 that you're talking about currently. It was like 2016, 2017. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so I moved out here 2018. Okay. So yeah, that's the gap I'm trying to bridge. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. So really, just like grinding, like 2016 graduation to 2018. Really, just like hustling, like not really talking to many people, like and just strictly use flips well then i like got into new like the margins are slimmer but the market's obviously more defined easier yeah. to sell um you shoes you can kind of make your own price mm -hmm. but uh doing that i started <laughs> i don't know if i should speak on this i think <laughs> they were like illegal shoe raffles i was doing shoe raffles online you wait you were running them or you were running them i was the house well how okay explain to me that <laughs> <laughs> So basically like I had, it was like a very common thing, right? But I made my own group and basically I would take a shoe. I would only do brand new just so there was no confusion when right. people received a used shoe in, right? So I'd do brand new and say it was like worth 800. I would say, okay, 10 people, a hundred dollars gotcha. a slot, okay. right? Yeah. And if they took the shoe, I'd get a thousand bucks for an $800 shoe Yeah. or I'd do a cash option, which would be like 800 bucks. Yeah. And then like, if they take the shoe, I get more than market. If they take the cash option, the house just made 200 bucks. Yeah. Can't so lose. Was, you can't lose. So like do the math. Like I was doing maybe like a few of those a day, mm -hmm. like out of my mom's house, like just in my bedroom still like waking up at like 8 a.m. Just like getting after it. Um, and then I did that for a few months. And then I remember that was like because I had the plan of like, oh, I'm going to L.A. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to think of something creative. Like so I was doing like the raffles. On top of the DoorDash, yeah, like everything. On top of flipping the U shoes and the new shoes, hustler. Like, I, yeah, it was just like looking back. It's like wow, it was like. It, but I guess it worked out. Now, did you ever get into getting shoes with bots? Like where you run the bots to the yeah, websites? Yeah, I think every reseller's tried it. Um, I never had luck with it. I'm not too techy with that stuff, mm -hmm. and like, it's it's so competitive. Cause like, yeah. I think I'm good. Cause I spent $500 on my bot. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I'm good. When in reality, there's like 8,000, $10,000 bots out there that'll yeah. literally wipe the whole inventory. Yeah. Like it's such a vicious game. And like, Oh yeah. You see people flex like 5,000 pairs of shoes. Like that is really real. Like yeah. if you have the capital to fund that, like you could clear out 
anything and make a ton of money doing it you make a lot of money there's a lot of like associated costs but like you make so much money yeah see i, I got into the flipping side of shoes when the yeezys started coming out like when they were was that? really exclusive right uh this was would probably have like been 2016 early 2017 okay like early, that's when i really started getting into yeah. it and i remember i'd have to buy like some server and servers York. proxies yeah like, yeah yeah bro, and just run so it it's like hands. ah that didn't work i think i got yeah. one supreme shirt in yeah like five yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you look at all the costs you're like yo i paid 85 bucks for a 70 dollars tee. yeah i made 10 bucks on the shirt literally <laughs> and then it's like you don't know if it's gonna work until 8 a.m the next morning yeah and it's like you forgot to click one box mm -hmm. and it's wiped and it's like all right wait for next week yeah it's just so difficult yeah Shit. so right now you're way up there and you're about to make the move to la when you were coming to la was your plan like i want a store on melrose i want it like or did well you that not was like any of this? that was like the long-term goal that so was you like always since had was, this in yeah yeah, yeah no gotcha. i knew it was gonna happen it was just when probably had that goal since like i first fell in love with sneakers like eight years ago i love what you just said right there because that's i see that in so many people i know and so many people mm -hmm. we know it's like i knew it would happen but it was just when it was just when yeah there's there, never a doubt yeah it's just a matter of time yeah and that's that's yeah. the way i see like this like people talk about manifestation in like a trendy way uh -huh. i don't know what you guys are talking about my thoughts are my reality i'm yeah. just waiting for it to catch up yeah no it's like yeah and that's like i think that's one of the most powerful things you can have in your head yeah like you already know i don't know what you're thinking but you know you'll have it yeah so i already do yeah exactly you know, i already head, have I already it do. It's just like waiting. Yeah, because there, I sense there is no doubt in your mind when you said that. You're like, yeah, I knew I was happy. It just didn't matter when. Yeah, but exactly. How did you? How did you acquire that win? Like when so, you went to LA. So during like my whole like grind phase, like the couple years like before I went to came to LA, um, I was like pretty frugal. Like did not care about shoes. Like new Vans every month. Like I was like whatever, fifty dollars shoes. Like I just lost my passion for shoes. I think that's something that I kind of got back like a few months ago, like really getting back into yeah. sneakers and stuff. But um, I was just like, it sounds so cliche, but it was like ducking your head, like clocking in, you know, yeah. it's like shit like that. That's like really real. Like if you really do that and you find the willpower, like you're going to see so much change. And um, so I was doing that. And then I remember I came to LA on like a trip and uh, oh fuck came to LA on a trip and then I came back and my mom grew up here so like gotcha. she was super familiar she grew up in Hollywood she knew like the whole lifestyle mm -hmm. she always knew like oh you're gonna love it like I know you're gonna move there one day so I went on this trip I came back and I was like and that was your first time in LA no because my my parents split up when I was younger so my gotcha. dad lived down here so okay. I was like already pretty familiar with it um but I came back and I was like mom I'm moving to LA next week like didn't have a lease signed like didn't even look at a place i was just like yeah i'm doing it and i remember my first spot like if you know la like koreatown is like not where you want to go you know not but it's like a starter place it's where a lot of people go first right um and you know i <laughs> i found a place on like rent.com or zillow and i was like yeah interior looks fine i was like koreatown sent the money i was like i'm there and then uh a week later, I like packed up all my stuff, got a U-Haul and came here. And after like a seven hour drive, I pull up to this place and I'm thinking like, OK, maybe it's like a couple miles out of the hood. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you're here. Yeah. I was just like, oh, do you remember what part of Koreatown? Like what was Normandy, the intersection? Normandy, six and Normandy. So you have a when, when I first story. came to L.A. Right. I came here. I didn't have a plan. My buddy's mom got us a studio in Koreatown, Normandy, and Wilshire. Yeah. I so it, I was a little more north of that. Okay, okay. But so the gym I went to, the 24, was like right over there. I know. Okay, that, that dude, that 24 <laughs> hour, have you ever looked at the Yelp reviews for that one? <laughs> I, oh, bro. man, you don't want to read that oh stuff. My gosh. That, that 24 hour is like a 1.4 out of 5. <laughs> yeah. I joined that new Koreatown gym right next to it. I don't know if it was built when you went there. Uh -huh. Brand new. And they give you like a, a two week, um, I guess, tester phase for like 80 bucks. Yeah. I just took a pen and I kept like editing the date. Right. And they just kept letting me in. Dude. But yeah, it was five of us in a studio. And like I saw like the store get robbed with two AK 47s. Right. Like I saw there's so many like people living on our block. Oh, and it's literally seven minutes that way. Yeah. It's crazy. And that's LA is an interesting spot. But uh, Koreatown will teach you like 
I don't know. It'll it's te- a good foundation. Yeah. Because then it's like you just always know that like you got to avoid going back yeah. to Six in Normandy. Exactly. Yeah. Damn, I wonder how close our places were. Well, I know like I know exactly where that would be. It would be like because it goes Sixth Street and then Wilshire. I was. I, or no, I was Normandy and Third. So you're four blocks down. I was right behind the McDonald's. Right There's there by a, the bus Is there stop. like an old hotel over there? Yeah. 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 I know exactly where that is. I think they film a bunch of movies in it now, mm-hmm. actually. That's the block I was living on. Yeah. Because I see it in so many TV shows. I'm like, oh, there's my apartment. How long ago were you there? This was the summer of 2016. And then that's when I just like, because I can tell you're a man of intuition. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm a man of intuition, too. I can just know right. that with what right. you're telling me. And when I just went back home one day back in college, I moved all my stuff in, woke up the next morning, moved all my stuff out. Right. Hey, mom, I'm dropping out of college. Uh-huh. No plans, but it ended Fuck up working it. out. Figure it out. And it seems like it worked out for you, this L.A. move you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, dude, grateful for everything. When you look back, I'm sure like Normandy taught you so much. Like, Oh, yeah. You're like living, you know. And what year was this for you? Uh, 18. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, because I've been here a little over two years now. So we just missed each other in that area. Yeah. Yeah. We go back. Yeah, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Cut costs a little bit. Yeah, I don't um, go that way much ever. Yeah. No, unless you're going downtown or something. Right. But yeah, got that spot. Um, Was just so like, I wasn't lost, but I was like, definitely had a little bit of doubt in my head like okay like this is weird i remember i moved in i was like yo like mom why is hot water not coming out oh you got to call the water company i was just like all these things were coming at me and i was like okay my overhead like i think it was like 1500 bucks a month so i was like whatever make 50 bucks a day and like i can live here hell yeah you know yeah so i was like i can make that work and like i was still doing the raffles a little bit um and then melrose was I don't know why I first came here. I think all the stores were here, all the sneaker stores. So I came out to Melrose one day and I saw round two down there, Fuller and Melrose. Classic. Like kids would literally stand on the corner, like 20 of them, and they would just buy shoes before they got into round two. And you're getting them for so cheap, right? Wait, what do you mean by that? Like imagine like this is round two store right here. Yeah. And this is the corner right here. Okay. These kids would literally post up here. Gotcha. And before people come in to sell their shoes around two, it would be like a bidding war. Oh, what? That's hilarious. crazy. It's so, like, I feel now that I own a store, I'm like, dude, like if those kids were ever right here, like I'd be pissed. Yeah. But like literally like walk here, be like, yo, how much you want? Oh, I want a hundred. This kid would say 80, 90, 120. <laughs> like it was crazy. Right. And I saw this and I was like, okay, like this looks like an easy way to make money. And I was like, I'm going to try this. So. I went out there, maybe brought like a couple thousand bucks. And like these, think about it, like there's 20 kids. Each kid might have average 3K on them. Like it's such a lick. Like it's the scariest thing. But like (laughs) when you're out there, you don't realize it. Yeah. And like there's dudes looking at you all day. Like it's Melrose at the end of the day, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But I was like, okay, I'll try it. So my friend Mots and Nick, like we would be out there just like hustling, buying shoes up. Would the round two people ever come out and like try to get you guys? Yeah, I tried to avoid all that because like. I was new to the area and I was like, I don't want any like bad. Yeah. That's not me. Um, But yeah, they would come out and like, they would ban kids from the store. Like, (laughs) dude, like it's so messed up. Cause like I would say 80% of the shoes that went by, they would get bought. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, where, where do they get shoes? Right. Like it's, it messes with their business a lot. I bet. Like literally. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I was doing that. And then, it's so funny, bro. <laughs> like, now that I really think about it, like now that I'm the guy with the store, like having some like 14 year old outside with like racks, just like shuffling them out. And that's like my money. Taking 80% of your shoes. Dude, literally. It's so crazy. Um, so that's where you're getting a lot of your shoes? All of them. All of them. Okay. All of them. Yeah. I mean, in a week, obviously like Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be like the best days, but you could probably source 50 pairs a week wow. you know average cost 200 bucks mm-hmm. and you want to sell them for 250 so now you're making a week 50 profit on 50 pairs you can make two three grand a week yeah just off that yeah. and there are a lot of pre-owned shoes so like i wasn't so much into it like i already was like okay i'm making enough that like i don't have to clean the shoes but i sometimes would you know like more expensive shoes you want to clean them up cheaper oh, ones yeah. doesn't matter 
so I was like, okay, this is amazing. Like this can make me 10 grand a month rents 1500. And like in my head, when I moved out here, I was trying to convince myself that groceries would cost me a hundred bucks a week, uh, a month, a month. I was like, <laughs> how, like I was just so <laughs> like, uncalculated. Now it's like $50 door dashes yeah. every day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, was doing that. And I was like super confident with it. I was like, dude, I'm going to make it work. I was like, mom, like, I'm not coming home. Like I got everything covered. And then I met uh, my current partner, Ellie, Mm -hmm. because he had a place called Wipe the Hype right there. So we would always be on the block together. And like he was there, I was there, whatever. And Ellie introduced me to this guy, Rami. And then me and Rami, Rami had a studio like three doors down from Ellie's spot. So it was like right over there. Okay. And Rami was like, oh, yeah, I have this studio. It was like probably half the size of this. Okay. And it was like a studio, but it had a storefront. And we just got to talking and I was like, oh, like it would be really cool if you sold shoes in here. Like all the other places on Melrose, they have shoes. Obviously, they kill it. Um, And I was like, let's try it out. And like we really bonded. Rami's like one of my like, it's kind of like a big bro. He's like 32 and like he's kind of like been through all the L.A. life, like all the bullshit. Like he knows how it goes. So like, yeah. yeah, he's really solid guy. So he was like, all right, let's try it. So. I put like my shoes in there. I had some like capital going um, and we just started like a little shoe store and like I think max we had like 150 pairs in there. And you said this was on Melrose? Yeah, it was Melrose and uh, Fuller. How far away is that from here? Two blocks. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it was right there. It was like in between here and um, round two. Okay. We're giving round two a lot of promo today. Oh yeah. Shout out round two. <laughs> cool kicks while we're at it. <laughs> Sean, there you go. Okay, so me and Rami, mm-hmm. we did our thing. We did that for like six months. It was going well. I was super new to like the retail game, never knew like how it goes. And then I remember the kind of like downfall of that was having these guys from New York come in. Oh, man. Do you see where this is going? Yeah. And uh, they're like just cashing out and like they had like the ice on. And I was like, oh, this is Oh, you, you mean to... As consumers. Consumers, oh, okay. right. Okay, I don't right. see where this is going. Okay. <laughs> okay, so they started coming in and like, dude, they're like every other week, like I would get like gangs of like people from New York. They'd be like, you you got these? Like I need these in a size 12, like straight New York voices. And uh, I'd be like, yeah, dude, this is sick. Like I'm making money. Like How are they paying? They're paying price. Like they asking cash price. or credit. So it was card. Uh-huh. So that now was I know the where this is going. Yeah. Right. And then I remember we got like our end of month statement <laughs> and it was like negative 23 K in chargebacks. Oh my God. And I was like, so confused. Right. And I yeah. got hit with that. And that was like, definitely not a loss I could take. I was like, yo, no. 25 racks. Like, how could they get away with that? It's because they don't care about the business. They care about the person. So you didn't get any dispute letters or anything? No, I got dispute letters, but it's not, it's, I could fight it. But at the same time, since I didn't insert the chip or like take a picture of ID or anything like that, there's nothing I could do. Now I know like only take a payment if it's chip, if it's yeah. not chip, don't manually enter. So that's why they have the chip. Yeah. The chip gotcha. is okay. straight security. So like literally had to eat that L. My God. And, um, It was like super fucking difficult. I was like not sure how I was gonna like go about it. But we did that for like a couple more months. Like the inventory was like depleting. Like I was like, yo, this is like this is fucked. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right, mom, like maybe I am (laughs) no, but um then Ellie approached me, the kid who owned the sneaker cleaning store. He approached me one day and he was like, Yo, like let's go open a shoe store. And I was like, Okay, like and I kind of dabbled in e a little bit at this point, And uh-huh. I had like a winning product, a yeah. couple winning products. Hell so yeah. it like, it was good. And like that actually gave me like, cause e-commerce is, is like amazing. When you're doing shoes, you're literally reinvesting every dollar mm-hmm. e-commerce. Like you reinvest like minimal. Right. I yeah. feel like most of it as is like take home. Yeah. Exactly. So like the e thing was like so new to me. I was like, oh wow. Like I received a 10 K payout and I can keep nine of it. Like yeah. it was so crazy. To amazing. Me. Yeah. Where shoes is like you sell 10K, you're reinvesting 10K. Mm-hmm. So like e-com, dabble with that. Um, 
had some money saved up from that. And then Ellie was like, oh, let's open a shoe store. I was like, yeah, I'm down. Um, like I, I'm already kind of in like a shoe store business right now. Like, I don't know what to do. He's like, okay, well I have this spot, which was that store right there. Gotcha. He's like, I just want to check it out. And we walked in and like, no, like not many stores on Melrose will have the double ceilings. Yeah. So like when you walk in, it's like really, it just like, it's, it's shocking. crazy. It's shocking. <laughs> and we walked in here and I was just like, it's like one of those things where it's like, it seems so unobtainable until you start putting the steps into it. And then mm -hmm. you're like, oh, wow, I can actually do that. Mm -hmm. Like walking in, I was like, yeah, it's cool. Like, what do you want to do with this? Like, like it's big. We can't. Was it all up. the way back and everything? All the way back. Gotcha. It was exactly how it is. Like loft everything. Okay. Um, So I was like, yeah, like this is pointless. I was kind of like petty. Like, this is dumb. Why are we looking at this? <clears throat> and then he was like okay well let's just like see if we can do it and i was like i guess but i told him i was like i'm not doing this unless we have like multiple people on board like i want a few partners so we can all like not burn ourselves right. out with work and like i was like really focused on e-com at this point actually so i was like thinking like oh i want to double down on e-com and like she was a kind of like back burner type thing after the chargebacks yeah, so i was yeah, like yeah whatever um so i was like bring more partners on i want to focus on like other things try that out so we talked to the landlord it was like i think he wanted like 7k a month we got him down to 6400 damn that's way cheaper than i oh, thought it's so cheap that's Both, what that's what we're paying at that's what i was paying at 1733 just yeah, for the room for a room wow so both of these combined it's about 13k that I thought you were gonna say so no, much more. This no. is a deal. That's like dude. a hidden gem. Like people, people need to not know. Like Melrose is cheap for the amount of foot traffic you get, and if you sell sneakers, obviously, yeah, perfect. there's not much risk to it. Um, so yeah, they're like, okay, it's sixty four hundred. Like you guys are young. So I, me and Ellie, right, and then I reached out to a couple guys I knew, uh, Dom and Josh, who had like this online supreme retail type thing. They're just like hustling. We're all in the same category, same age. So I was like, yo, I want you guys to come like merge your premium cop company with what we're doing. And I want like the four of us to just like build a dope store. So brought them on. Um, I think it was like 40K to get in here. And then um, we just put our money up and did it. And I remember I like signed the papers and I went on like a vacation in Mexico. Nice. Then, yeah. Wait, so 40 K is that to like get in here? So it's like six months. Yeah. Well, it's like security. Oh yeah. Like it was like a fat security deposit. Yeah. Just cause like, we're obviously a liability. Like, bro, I looked like a, like, I know it was only two years ago. I looked like a baby though, bro. <laughs> I was like, it was just crazy to me. And like all this shit seemed like so out of the world to me. I was like, nah, this can't be this easy. And then like every day we were making progress towards it. And I was like, holy shit. Like we got the keys. I was like, wow, like I own a store now. Yeah. Like name on the lease, everything. I was like, this is crazy. So I was like, okay, that part's done. Now we got to figure out how to fill this. Mm -hmm. And we opened with probably 150 pairs of shoes just because we had to put so much money into getting it and then into renovations. Yeah. Like that was probably already a hundred right there. Yeah. And we had like no money for the bank. We put every dollar into shoes. We're like, fuck it. Like, we're just going to pray that this. Oh, yeah. Those are so dope. Where'd you find it? Sorry. No, good. Okay. No, I oh, those are so sick. Million stitches on those. A million stitches a million on the cookies and A million cakes, 17. A million 17. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh, so like, we're like, okay, like, balls to the wall. Like, let's just do it got rid of like pretty much drained my account i was like whatever let's just try it out and then i remember our first day we did like really well but we had like a lot of daily deals type thing to like gain some momentum what do you mean like taking like a 300 hundred dollar shoe and being like grand opening oh, 200 okay yeah you yeah. know yeah like we kind of shot ourselves in the foot because we did that with like half our inventory like daily deals and you say you're like 150 pairs <clears throat> 150 pairs and where do you realistically we gave like 30 40 discounts okay and where'd yeah. you get all those from uh it was like combined inventory and then oh okay. we had like a buyout table like the week before we opened mm -hmm. we put just like a six foot table outside and like we had cash and like we we're like quick cash for your shoes and like yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously we we had like a tarp up in the window so a bunch of these kids were like oh like just so intrigued by it 
Um, so we had the signage. Were up. they mainly new or were they mainly used? Just I'd say 50-50. Okay, yeah. Yeah, about 50-50. Um, now I buy probably 90% new. Yeah. It's just so much easier. Like They appreciate much better. Mm-hmm. Um, but... So yeah, opened up, and then things were going pretty good. I'm trying to date back. So we opened April of 2019. Okay. So we're about a year and a half in, April 13th. Um, And then, yeah, things were pretty smooth. Like, it, there was no complaints. Like, there were obviously, like, rougher times, like, as far as, like, we dealt with some chargebacks again. We dealt with getting sold stolen stuff. Oh shit! Yeah, was it a pretty big hit for the stolen stuff? Um, yeah, it was more so like I don't want to dive too deep into it. It was like the context of like it was just like a really sticky situation yeah. with the stolen stuff. Um, because like it was like very like specific pieces to where like if we posted on our social media, someone else could be like, "Oh, this is where the stolen piece is." Like to be like. I don't want to dive into it. Okay, no but it problem. But like, no it was like very obvious that like we had the stolen stuff. And right. Like we were buying it off of someone that was like kid, like repetitively selling us stuff. So we were like, oh. Gotcha. Like okay. I think we bought a lot of stolen stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that was super sticky. Um, obviously, like at times like this stuff doesn't move. Like mm-hmm. not a lot of money in the bank. But we just hung in there. Um, have you ever? I guess. Have you ever? accidentally bought any fake things uh yeah i bought it off like people at this point i buy pretty much just wholesale shoes Mm -hmm. so it's not like buying one at a time like probably buy like maybe five six seven hundred pairs a week so like if i'm buying it off those people like the back room you saw that was like one shipment from the other day that hasn't been processed yet oh my god so like at this point it's like if there was a fake in there it's literally like oh i just call my guy money sent back yeah because like they're buying it that way they're buying in wholesale i buy in wholesale it's like so you got a good supply chain now yeah the supply chain works for sure um but yeah so our first year in business well, we were in business like 10 and a half months. Uh, so we were in business like nine months. Acquired this spot. And then we just signed the lease. They left. We had first dibs because this building. So the one we're in and then the original store and then that corner store that we want to get, it's all owned by the same guy. So this left. We we're always paying our rent on time. We we're like, okay, like we don't have the most money, but like it's working. Right. So he was like, okay, well, they're leaving. Like, do you want first dibs? We were like, we had no plan. We were like, probably like 10K in the account. We're like, yeah, like, sure. And what? when did like this discussion start happening? Was it around the time I met you? <clears throat> um, Probably. Because I met you in January. Yeah. January. So I would say, yeah, right around then. Okay. So yeah, we were like, okay, we're going to take this spot. Um, And then we had no plans for it. We were like, we just need it. Because if we don't take it, these things are, it's like a triple net. So yeah. it's a three-year lease triple net. So like this could be locked up for 10 years. Yeah. So we're like, if we don't get it now, we're probably never going to get it. Right. That's such a rare opportunity. <clears throat> yeah. So we took it and then we didn't have them connected at all. I <laughs> threw the cookies up there. The Where? sticky. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What, was it a bitch tearing down this wall? and? So it was illegal actually. Oh, really? Yeah. So at the bottom, <laughs> there's like 12 inches of concrete. That's like industry standard for building a big building. Mm-hmm. You need like that concrete foundation. And we, when we were doing it, the contractors were like, oh, like you can't say we did this work for you. And we we're like, what do you mean? Like you're being weird. They're like, no, we didn't do this work. And we we're like, okay. And then the next day, he brings his jackhammer and he's like, this is why I couldn't tell you. Like, we're not supposed to take out this concrete. <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, oh, sick. Like shit's going to come down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we we got this spot. And then COVID hit probably a month later. We're like COVID hit where the stores were closing, right? Right, 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 right. Um, and then that kind of like, that was like our one year was hit over COVID. So it kind of sucked. Mm-hmm. But we it gave us like some free time to like figure out what we were doing over here. So over COVID, we were doing like 
you know, uh, personal shopping. And then we were working on this side. And then one day I was like, oh, like we should just connect the stores. Mm -hmm. And we had a hammer in the back and I literally threw it at the wall. And I was like, we have to do it now. Like wait, right wait, here. Wait. wait, so what, what were they doing with the foundation then? Was this after you threw the hammer or before? That was after. So okay, like I, okay, I took the it. hammer yeah. and I was like, dude, we need to connect these. And I was like right about here. And I took the hammer and I was like, all right, throw wow. it at the wall. And I was like, all right, there's already a hole. Like we just have to <laughs> proceed now. Um, how were you doing that? Were you just having like, how, like, how were you separating? The well, two? we, we never opened this side until that was open. Oh, okay. Yeah. We don't even open this door. We funnel everyone through that door. I didn't know there was a door there. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So we funnel everyone through that door. Um, so you open we have our security over there. And then you open this amazing hella vaulted ceilings. Yeah. You got two sides now. Yeah. And then COVID hits. Yeah. And then COVID hits. Um, but this wasn't open yet. This was like, we had just got it when COVID hit. Oh, okay. So okay. when COVID hit, it was kind of nice because it was like, okay, um, we don't have to pay rent right now. We could just work on this. Oh, that's nice. Right. So it was like a break. So we... <clears throat> we worked on this while COVID was going, doing like private shopping over there. And then finally, like the bands got lifted and then we were able to open both of these. And that's when like everything just like turned up. I'd say like four months ago is when we saw like a drastic change. I think the EDD money probably played a big role in that. Yeah. Um. But yeah, everything's been pretty, pretty solid since. So when COVID hit, like, did you, I'm, cause you're the only person I know who has a storefront business. So mm -hmm. I have so many questions. Yeah. Especially a, a store as sick as this. Thank you. What, like, did you get a message? Did you get like an email from Newson or how did that work? Where it's like, no, they, it was, it was just like staying updated to like, it was literally tweets how everyone else saw it. Oh, really? We didn't get like an official or like maybe our landlord was supposed to pass it on, but he mm -hmm. never did. So, um, it was just like literally following Twitter, like, oh, do we have to close tomorrow? Oh shit, we do. Wow. Like I saw a tweet from Newsom, like That's you know? such a weird, weird thing. Yeah. And it was like I saw like I was in the smoke shop one day and I saw them get busted by like an agent. He like showed his badge, like you can't be open, blah blah blah. Oh my god. So gosh. I was like, Yeah, this is really not a game. Yeah. So we shut down. <clears throat> it was like you shut down mid March. Yeah, mid March. Yeah, that's when I left. Yep. It was like mid March and then I I was just chilling. I was like, I I don't know. When you're like doing something every day and then you're not, it's it weird. was just so weird. Yeah. I couldn't like, I could accept the fact for like a month or two. And then after that, I was like, okay, like this is weird as fuck. Like, when were you first allowed to open? Like the first time? Uh, so we, were, we were closed for like 65, 70 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which was like, dude, so mid-March, maybe June-ish. So early June, or, early June or late May. Well, what would 65 days be? And that would just be call it 75 days. So mid March then to April to May to June. So like June. Okay. Cause that was going to be my next question. Like, cause since you're only, not only are you the only person I know with a storefront business, but you're the only one I know with a storefront business in LA when the riots hit. And that was going to be my next question. Did you, yeah, cause I know that it was, was insane. They like hit right when restaurants started opening it was like the same day it was a really weird yeah. thing i was wondering like were you guys do you remember were you able um, to open i remember everything okay it was so insane um so i remember just hearing that like crazy stuff was going on i was hanging out with ben that day the, um, oh yeah 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 so i was hanging out with ben and like him and luca do the von dutch marketing right so that's like their baby mm -hmm. um so i was at ben's house and like did you ever go to his house? It's like right down the street. No, no, never. Yeah, so he literally lived like right there. And we were at his house and like we heard all the helicopters and it was just like insane. We got in his car and we drove to Von Dutch. Von Dutch was on fire. Damn, it's like it was actively daylight. on fire. Oh, yes, broad daylight. Broad daylight. On fire. <sighs> Ben's like obviously like he he like has his phone out. He's like taking a photo. Sky comes and spray paints his windshield. With black spray paint. And oh, I was my like, God. I have a video on my phone. I'll send it to you. Oh, wait. Yeah, I remember I talked to you guys this night. Remember on Instagram Live? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have that IG Live on my phone still. And then we come by here and, like, nothing's happening over here. But obviously, like, we were monitoring it. 
Oh, so oh. Von Dutch wasn't on on what 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 are Von Dutch is like three blocks to the left. Okay, they're well, on Melrose. What road are we on right now? We're on Melrose. This is Melrose. Yeah. Oh, I thought Melrose was like that street right there that went all the way no, no, down. No, no, Melrose is this way. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So Von Dutch was right down there. Um, and it was just like so crazy, like seeing all this happen, and like I couldn't even sleep, and like I couldn't even get like my way home like i because of where he lived and it was like right in the heat yeah like i couldn't even leave so i was there and i was just like watching the security cameras but like i have a few partners and our cameras only let one person on at a time so oh we're like God. in our group chat <clears throat> and i'll be like yo log off like who keeps booting me we're all getting so pissed so like you would be like you booted me i booted him like we couldn't all watch at the same time and it was just driving us crazy jesus yeah and then i remember watching the cameras and these guys, like five, ten dudes come and they start yanking on our door. And then this is probably 2 a.m. And like they have baseball bats, like they're straight ready. Whoa. Right. Because keep in mind, Soul Stage, Flight Club, Cool Kicks, Round Two, every sneaker store. They all got hit. hit. We're the last ones. Right. So OK, we're... so this is a couple days into the into the riots. No, that was like they got hit the first day. Oh, so okay, I see. I see. Right. So it was and like, it was like gotcha. say say they got hit at eight PM, nine PM, ten PM. Yeah. It was two AM and we were still like standing. Yeah. Um, and then the guy who owns the the Mexican food place right here, mm -hmm. um, he literally like that's my guy. Like I buy food from there all the time. He just loves us. He literally like solo with like ten dudes around him. He's like he's like, You're not going in here. And they're like, Oh, we're gonna take your head off, like blah blah blah. He's oh like, my Do God. it. Just like a crazy old guy. Like, oh my god! Like, what are you gonna do to that when you're like, yo, I'm gonna smack your head off, and someone's like, do it. Yeah, you just really gonna kill this eyes. guy for some shoes? Right. And like, he just like held it down, and Ooh. um, dude, that's it was chilling. insane. And I have like the video footage of it, and uh, yeah, they didn't mess with us. And then like the next day, we just ended up having like graffiti. Like I remember, I came down here at 7 a.m. Like mm. no sleep. It was super crazy because I lived up in Laurel Canyon, if you know where that is. Yeah. And there were people like my neighbors got their windows smashed. Yeah, but I heard. I was they're... like, I was really up in Laurel Canyon. Yeah. Like to where like it like, it's super hard to get to, and like yeah. people are getting their houses vandalized up there. And I was like, dude, no one's safe right now. Um. And yeah, we got through the riots, and you know, luckily, like luckily, nothing happened. Like he stayed safe. I compensated him literally saved the business and uh yeah it was insane and then you know all the like the world just like really became a wreck the past few months yeah just everything that's for sure and but i mean it had a positive impact on our business somehow I really it was the edd money or like i don't know what it was but past few months has been awesome like plotting on a new store hell yeah that's really good dude yeah damn that's wild and not many people can say that they own a business through that, dude. And that's that's incredible. It's crazy. And not sure. many people can say that they had a business on Melrose right. that didn't get hit. Right. No, it was insane. And I felt so guilty walking down Melrose and like, bro, like I think seven buildings got caught on fire. 90% of buildings had their windows smashed. And I just felt like guilty. Yeah. I was like, dude, like I can't even feel for you right now. Like I can, but I can't. Yeah. You know, so... It was just such an insane thing. I was thinking about the other day, like, this is literally shit that, like, our kids are going to be taught in 30 years. Mm -hmm. Like, the L.A. riots, the whatever. The like, COVID. COVID. Just, like, oh, this is a horror story that yeah. we live in. Literally is. Like, there was a pandemic and then whatever. It's I, just so crazy. I remember that because the day they started <laughs> is when I got to Colorado in that yeah. mountain house. Yeah. And it was the strangest feeling because I was looking at my phone. And I was seeing this stuff go on. And then I look up for my Your phone. house was like a target too for like, whatever, like we're going to get the rich white people. Oh, like yeah. in the hills, you know. Well, that, I would, my lease had ended by then because our lease was until May 1st. Oh, okay. And so that, I got out of there, mm -hmm. but I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know what was going to happen. Nobody knew what was going to happen. World was just ending. But I was just somewhere deep in the mountains in a town of 1,400 people. Yeah. Quiet as hell. And Chilling. it was like such a contrast because it was peace all around me, but not in my head because right. I was like, I needed to stay off my phone, but how could I stay off my phone? Like this shit's happening and where I was just living, like a city I really, Literally. really love. Literally. And um, yeah, it was just a really weird times. Mm -hmm. But 
Moving Same on, dogs. one question I really wanted to ask you since I walked in here. Uh-huh. How many pairs of shoes do you have currently? Uh, right now, we're probably sitting on like... Uh, I'd say like 2,500 2, pairs. 2,500 pairs. Around 2,025. Over 2,000 pairs. And what what are the most expensive? These Dior's right here? Yeah. I have a few more in the glass display. I a have few some more? Like, <laughs> I have like some like, yeah, these are crazy. These are just like the more hype ones. So yeah, like the high top Dior's, low top Dior's, Red October's obviously. Of course. I just picked up like a Justin Timberlake, like friends and family pair of Jordan 1's. They're crazy. I have like the DJ Khaled friends and family. Oh my God. Like stuff like that doesn't sell, but like if you want to be like, I don't know, like cool. You gotta yeah. have stuff like that. So yeah. always try and keep like some dope stuff, but it gets them in the store. Yeah, for sure. And it's just like it's good for our TikTok stuff that we do. It's like good to have these type of shoes for uh before I came here, someone at the house was telling me that you guys just blew up on TikTok and it was because of some girl. Yeah. Here, right? Yeah. So and she, she does like, the TikTok game. Yeah, she does the TikToks for us. Um my partner Ellie kinda like tells her what to do he's like we call him like the tiktok pimp he's he's like yo do this like take this shoe like make something with this like it's super funny but um yeah the tiktok stuff has worked out really well it's like definitely given us like a new lane of like uh influencers Mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them that we like to work with and like i'd say right now i personally think it's like a bit cringy like how our business goes like how how, like It's just like, think of like what I told you, like I've been like a fan of sneakers for years now. Like it's like a real like passion for me. Mm -hmm. And then you got like, like I just look at like, this is so funny to say, but like it's like the new guys who are like, they just sell like Jordan ones to girls and like they're not really in the sneaker industry. They're just like TikTok famous and they just like, I don't know. I feel like we look like we're just like capitalizing on the market when really like I'm like a true sneakerhead. Um, but it's what works. It's where the money's at. Mm-hmm. You know, the money is with like these girls who like, oh, Charlie D'Amelio shops here. Now they want to go get their shoes there. Like, yeah. So it's like that's kind of like where we capitalize, but it works. What Charlie get? Uh, Charlie. I'm trying to think of the last time she got like, she like legit will spike the sneaker market. It's super funny. She'll, she can she spiked the Dunkin' Donut market, dude. She, yeah, it's crazy the way. No, how her pull is insane. Have. Um, so like I try and be kind of strategic when like we give her shoes because mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, we got a bunch of these left, like yeah. you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, like Jordan One mids, it's like the basic stuff. Jordan One mids are like mm-hmm. it's super funny. You can like on our uh, Shopify analytics, you can like literally look up like what people are typing, like their most. Oh, like, really? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Search, and they'll be like. Search green and white jordans they're like something that charlie wore in a tiktok they're yeah. like green blue jordan <laughs> like you see all these different variations of what they're searching um so yeah influencers have definitely helped us a lot tiktok and instagram and just like collabing with people and mm-hmm. a bunch ha- of different have stuff. you ever thought about doing what cool kicks does with the vlogs because i've seen a couple of their vlogs yeah those so, get so many views dude so we just started that and we're like really so we've been working on our vlogs for like two months now Mm -hmm. we flew this kid kenny out from new york he's a legend literally like quit his job as like a cpa to like come make vlogs for us damn like dude and like i hate to speak on things until they come out but like we're gonna like do some dope shit on youtube like we have our first vlog coming out in a couple weeks that station up there is like where kenny just grinds it does is he big into youtube or is he big into like uh like just the making of the video the making of the video he can okay. throw everything together if you need any like advice for like the the algorithm stuff oh yeah, yeah, yeah. oh dude i got you game changing for sure game changing. i'll link him up with you absolutely i'd okay. love to help algorithms obviously important oh yeah that's everything yeah like right? this this podcast right now if you search st louis podcast number one in the world that's sick uh i bet shoe flipping podcasts this will probably be number one for a bit let's go uh, anything any relative terms of this it's probably going to be number one that's crazy just because human taught me so much okay so much like when i went to colorado for that trip uh-huh. the video i posted ranked number three in the world during the protests 
So if you search Colorado in like anywhere, it would go like raw footage. Uh, everyone's laying down on the field. Next one was like uh, fires caught in downtown Denver, Colorado. And then third, driving to Colorado <laughs> <laughs> in my spray painted car with a big thumbs up <laughs> for just the word Colorado. I'd never been That's there before. I never made a video before. Is it There's so much power? Yeah. I mean, you don't have to give up the sauce, but like. I'll give up the sauce. What, what is it? It's essentially connecting the thumbnail to the description, to the hashtags, to the things people are commenting. So it's like really deep. It's really deep because okay. I would say there's about six different layers I go because you got okay. channel tags, you got video tags, you got um, specific keywords and how many times the keywords are. And it go, even goes down to how many times you say that word in the video. Right. Like that algorithm is so deep. But Human's obviously, right. Human knows what he's doing. Um, how do you see the... I'm going to ask you a question. How do you see like the YouTube engagement fall to your Instagram? Is it really strong? Is it good? Like TikTok engagement's crazy. Like how is YouTube engagement? Um, in terms of like followers from YouTube to Instagram? Yeah. I w well, I got most of my followings from YouTube and on YouTube, I got 85,000 subs and on Instagram, I have 34%. So about 50%. Okay. But you got to end the they video well, with the tags. Oh right. yeah, definitely. Yeah. And like I was telling you before this, I'm, I've never been into paying for followers or anything like that. Cause when you pay for followers, your, your feed only gets, your posts only get shown to a certain percentage of your following. It's not like the good old days when it was chronological. Mm -hmm. So if half the people who are following you, are from a giveaway or right. because some famous person told them to follow you. You just lost like 50% of people, like 50% of the people who actually want yeah, to see your stuff. Yeah, the algorithm, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I've never been in favor of that, but you got to end every video with your tags mm -hmm. for sure. Cause I know every time I post a tag, I get people adding me on Snapchat like crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing I was gonna ask you about the stock is, so you got over 2000 pairs, right? Yeah. What's the current value? If you had to guess and in turn, not how much you bought it for, but how much like I would sell it for. Yeah. Uh, just quick math. I'd say our average tickets about 400. So it'd be like 2000 times 400. 8 million. I don't think so. 2000 times 400. I'll be lit. I'm, with I'm it. pretty sure it's, it's either 800 K or 8 million. Uh, 400 times is why we got 2.1 GPAs. 800,000. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Plus clothing and like random stuff. Oh yeah. I'd you got say, a lot of clothing. So you think about a million. Like, yeah. Maybe a little over. A little over a million dollars in clothing. Unbelievable. And I think that's one thing that I guess the older generation doesn't really understand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I used to be heavy into designer. Like, cause yeah. when I first, I didn't, I didn't have obviously any of this stuff when I was growing right. up. So when I started making money, I felt like I had You're something self to prove. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so when you get it, you like, you like, I don't know. You, you want through a little phase. You yeah, it's like I want to know what what's that feeling of wearing <laughs> mm -hmm. a, a six hundred dollar hoodie or like yeah. any of this stuff. So like, and you want to get it at the store yourself and like, mm -hmm. yeah. Unfortunately, in St. Louis, there's not many options for that. Right. I was using the app Grailed a ton. Okay. Shout out Grailed. Shout out Grailed. But yeah, I got a I got a decent sneaker collection. Have you ever seen me post about those? Uh uh. I would say I got the the Yeezy 750s, the the OGs. Okay. I got. Dude, we should do a sneaker shop in the Scott Hilsey. Oh, I would love that. Let's do it. I would love that. Game. I see a couple a of shoes nostalgia. I'd probably pick up. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, I got the the UNC. I saw them the UNC no, uh, off whites. Seen yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen yeah. So you've seen. So you've $2, seen. Two thousand dollars shoe. Yeah, and the the value I got that for seven fifty. That's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Everything's gone up like thirty percent. Yeah, that's like, why when my shoes don't sell, like. It's like, all right, yeah. I just made 10% this month on inventory. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're not paying any inventory fees or, uh, or anything. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and back to what, what I was saying about like the designer. I don't know, man. I, I like they say, I think Louis Vuitton is the most successful clothing brand ever. And I think their market caps it. like 70 billion or something like that. And That's it's like, insane. what does it take? Cause I know to you're, create that exactly to create that feeling because people are paying for that right. feeling they know that these like the i thought you saw about the new, it so many times have you seen the new gucci jeans uh-uh literally it's they're trying this new thing where it, it comes with grass stains already on the knees right yeah <laughs> but they're selling them for a thousand it's probably like forty dollars to make mm -hmm. maybe sixty dollars because it's really high material mm -hmm. but why can certain brands charge 
I was thinking about this the other day. I was talking to my girlfriend about it. Um, I think like, like, so like, for example, like, I think like right now, I don't know if you follow like off white at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I think follow Virgil. Yeah. So I think they're in like a transition right now of like going from streetwear to designer. Yeah. It's like, we're just in Miami. We're at the off white store and like things are like expensive, like Mm -hmm. literally designer prices, but it wasn't always like that. Mm -mm. And I feel like you got to start somewhere and like kind of like gain that audience with kind of lower prices yep. then you transition your brand now they have two thousand dollar handbags that are off white thousand dollar sneakers like it's literally designer prices but it was like over our head like we didn't even see it yeah now we think it's the norm but they kind of like transition the business into that mm-hmm. off white's already huge i think they're gonna continue to be bigger but right and it, it really got crazy. validated with his partnership yeah well, i yeah, guess yeah. he's the head creative director now for louis yeah yeah the whole designer game is crazy right now. Like Dior is like the hottest thing out there. Shout out Pop Smoke. Yeah, he definitely, right. he definitely had something to do he with know. that. <laughs> Once that song came out, oh I know everyone wanted Dior. 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 Did you ever Dior. hear that story about us and and Pop Smoke's like our connection to Pop Smoke's death? Uh uh-uh. uh You didn't hear about the story? No. So when we were when we came out here, we we're looking at houses, and there is this house on Hercules, uh-huh. and I'm like, dude, this is house. That what was that? That's in the hills. Yeah, yeah. That's uh that's a little bit east of where 1733 is. And I'm like, this is perfect. It's like 16.5 for like this awesome house with a pool, everything. The view's just not as good as that one. Yeah. And then Mikey showed that one. It was a little more, and we're like, whatever. Like this one, the interior is so nice, but that view was amazing. So we're uh-huh. like, which one should we go? Like, we all three were pulling for the Hercules house. And Mikey's like, no, trust me, we should go with the sunset. It's beautiful. So we flew out here, we saw it, and we're like, okay, we'll sign it and we go we move in two months later i see pop smoke got killed when he first moved out here and it says uh pop smoke killed on 1638 hercules or something like that and i go uh-huh. hercules why does that look familiar i look up the address that was the house you're it's supposed the to get. fucking house i was i talked to that real realtor all the time I, we were I did was he really, own that house or was he renting it he was, was he renting, renting it. it yeah actually just sold recently okay but how I weird if is the that? value increase at all no, I is think because it was at 2.8 million when we were looking at it, it was still 2.8. I was okay. surprised it sold that that yeah, recent. That's some bad voodoo. Yeah, but I just thought it was so weird when we saw this. Like, right. what it if really you, shows. What if you took that place? Exactly, and then, things would be so different. It's right. possibly could have like moved to like a penthouse apartment. Uh huh. And, and then that's you not even have to possible. worry about the security or anything right. like that. So it's so weird. That really showed me like, wow, the power of the butterfly effect. Uh huh. You don't know. You made a left turn on accident today. You don't know what that would have. You might have missed an accident by making an accident. It's crazy. And so I always try to look at life like that. Like I don't so let like anything those upset late me. Late night thoughts, and you're like, whoa. Right. Right. Every little thing, like, it's crazy. Have there you ever was... seen the butterfly effect with Ashton Kutcher? Uh uh-uh. uh Check that out. Okay. That you Is it out. about stuff like that? It's all about that. Only he has the chance to go back and change certain moments. Yeah. And then he like goes back to his reality and how, see how everything, that one moment. Yeah. It's like everything. literally one moment. Like I'll think back like of the first thing that intrigued me to even like sneakers. And it's like maybe he was hanging out with a certain friend. At a like, certain time. What if I never met that certain friend? Like, and then mm-hmm. it's like, it's insane. Ooh. Ooh. We made it all this way without doing that. <laughs> We're so close. And now it's like what decision am I going to make tomorrow that's going to like change my life or like it's just so weird Dude, when I moved out here and I was uber driving I thought about that all the time because it's like grind. I turn on this app if I make a left I have a completely <laughs> different day than if I make this right or when I make that right if I make a left after that because every that person is going to lead over here which is going to lead me over here yeah. which is going to leave me here and that really that Uber driving here really changed my perspective. I, I'm like picturing in my head you like sweating as the Uber driver was thrown in the back. And they're like, yo, what's wrong? You're like just thinking about all that. You're like sweating bullets. You're like, I'm fine. I'm having a transcendental <laughs> moment right now, man. Yeah, like, <laughs> dude. Yeah, no, it's crazy. No, I, t- I talked with a bunch of uh, writers about that too. Mm-hmm. I talk with them all the time. It's like, it's just so crazy. Like we would have never met if I would have made a right this morning but i made that right. left which led to me making right. this lady da, da, da. right and, and then so you like, end up in palm springs exactly like, so i try not to stress too much about just things in general like this sd card forgot That's my sick. sd card for this interview yeah. and it's like maybe the fact that i went over there and that maybe the fact that lady bought eight bottles of wine in front of me delayed this interview just enough for me to avoid something 
bad right. happening after I leave after could've this. Could have been a shooting. Exactly. It could have been. Crazy. It could have been so many things, especially out here. For I w- sure. I went to a park last night. Five cops pulled up and arrested us. Well, gave us misdemeanor citations. What were you guys doing? We walk into the park. We're like, damn, that's a nice view. Boom. They come up out of nowhere. Holy there's shit. there's kids in the park. They all came out. They all lined us up. It's like it's in L.A. If nothing happens in the house, if you once you leave your house, dude, every time it's an adventure, it's in a story. Yeah. It's like a situation that you're going to get into that only really happens in this. Especially area. when you're with the goons. Especially when you're with the goons. Yeah. When you're with the squad. Right. So um, how did you link up with Luca initially? Oh, right. How did I bypass that? Luca. Um, I met Luca through... A friend, I met Luca. I forget how I met Luca. Mm-hmm. Luca's just like LA, like he's around. Man. Like if you're in a business, like you'll meet Luca. The low key legend. Dude, the low key legend. Yeah. And, and I remember Luca, he was always like into sneakers. And I remember I invited him in one day. I was like, oh, come shop, blah, blah, blah. Um, that was at my first little shoe store. Yeah. And like <clears throat> we kind of kept in touch, not too much. And then um, I think I brought him in here and like, I just remember he was like, yo, show, like, how do I get involved? Like, he was not going to leave me alone until, like, you know, um, and, like, you know, like, obviously, like, I wouldn't put him in that position if, like, I didn't know, like, what he was already about. So, like, when he was like, how do I get involved? I was like, I got to talk to my guys. Like, let's figure something out. Um, And then, yeah, we just, like, hit it off. Like, Luca's, like, I'm sure you know him on a personal level. Like yeah. he's really fucking like he's we're all it. yeah, he's on it. Like none of us were given money. Like it just teaches you a different type of grind and a different hustle. And like just that hustle is like I feel like when you meet someone who like hustles but they like hustle on their own, like there's like it's just a stronger bond. And it rubs off on you. It rubs off on you. Like Big that's time. the type of people you need to be around. Yeah. Um so yeah, we got we got Luca involved. You know, obviously he does like online stuff, and like we're gonna start running some ads, just trying to figure out like the best way to do it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I I don't think ads are gonna help us too much mm-hmm. right now, um, because obviously our shoes are priced over StockX. So if we're selling shoes, right. like just get them on StockX, maybe to drive people into the store. Oh, so your whole inventory is on <clears throat> Shopify. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're Shopify. You know. Hell yeah. They'll toss this little Shopify loan here and there. Yeah. Those yeah. are fire. <laughs> the Shopify loans? Yeah. Yeah, though, they're they're amazing. Yeah. So um yeah, Shopify's goaded. I love Shopify. They make everything so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Changed my life for sure. Right. Changed my life. So right. we are an hour into this podcast, which means we got ten more minutes on the memory card. Let's go. <laughs> Before we end this, I just want to know. What direction do you see yourself going from here? Direction. Um, where do I see this going? I mean, I'm just exploring different options. Um, I do kind of want to not detach, but I kind of want to start focusing on other things. I feel like to a point I've clocked in for shoes. Oh, yeah. It's been like eight years now. Yeah. And I'm almost 23 now. Um, I really want to get to like the real money yeah like where you're like you know like just real money like where you can afford to have that lamborghini like you're not you're not living out of your means having that ferrari like right um and i think that's going to be in real estate Mm -hmm. and i obviously have a bunch of different projects i want to work on i've been super into this the past couple years just like really sneakers like a really long time haven't focused on any other things besides like e-commerce here and there but it just gives you time to like build up ideas in your head of what you want to do. And I feel like I have a whole catalog now and I just want to chase those and see what else there is and see what works, see what doesn't. But, um, I love sneakers. I always will. Oh yeah. But I think it's time to kind of clock out. I know what you mean. That's like a sad ending. At the end of the day, it's your intuition. It and is your intuition, man. So th- yeah. that's gonna lead to something even bigger right. and better. And right. you're always this is always gonna be part of your life. Right. It's just so crazy when you're like so like I feel like at this point, like sneakers is all I know. So it's like jumping into a whole different ball game. Yeah. It's like I'm the rookie again. Yeah. We're like now it's like I feel like I know like I just I know too much about shoes at this point. 
Like I can look at someone's foot and like literally know by the half size. Like I know what they are. And like, I don't know. I feel like sneakers is kind of like a, keeps you in a bubble. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's kind of like a younger thing to sell sneakers, which like you can make great money off of it. But um, my brain is just past that now, I feel like. And I want to just like really try LA. Like LA, people get rich here. Yeah. Off it's weird shit. Like the guy that we met in here right before this podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. What, what was um, it? Accountability coach. Accountability coach. Yeah. He teaches people how to be accountable. Yeah. He makes 500 bucks a month per student. Yeah. Like, you know, obviously I'm not going to try that, but I, I want to hop into real estate. License is almost done. Um, and then, yeah. yeah from there. This was like the, this was, I actually got cookies and cakes started on me. Oh, yeah. That's right? sick. Got a couple when was that? This was probably like three, four months ago. Yeah. Are you gonna th- are you gonna color it in? Or are you gonna keep it raw? Probably just keep it like that. Yeah. So like I told myself, I would have like every successful business go down my farm. Oh, that's so right? sick. So like this was definitely my first one. Yeah. Um, and like, yeah, I love sneakers. I always will. Like I think I'm always gonna sell sneakers mm-hmm. just because like at this point I've like built up the connections that it would be dumb to just yeah. stop. Yeah. So whether I'm consigning or like doing something like it's just always going to be a backbone for me Mm -hmm. like kind of a fallback but it's just time to try other things like really just built up this business time to like kind of wean off it a little bit and Mm then dude it's exciting it's like kind of like that scary but exciting it's like you know something so well and it's like i want to try other things but i'm gonna be a rookie i'm we're on a very similar boat like with drop shipping drop shipping has made me a lot of money and it's got me a position like it's so hard to leave something that wins yeah exactly like very winning but it's just like that in that thought that other self in your head is telling you the real money yeah exactly go this way go this way go this way mm-hmm. and sometimes you got to think about that but yeah with dropship it's like i feel like right now i still drop ship like i still like i still launched a store the other day <coughs> like it's it's still pretty easy relatively if you right. know what you're doing especially if you really know what you're doing you've been in uh-huh. a bunch of games but it's like where the real money's at is the investments you do with the money yeah. you made. So you made your money in Hard shoes. Hard money loans. I made my fun money in, in drop shipping and right. e-commerce YouTube. Now it's like, how do we become more of investors? Just work that money. Passive like it's income. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Or do you act off impulse? All the time. Like if you woke up tomorrow and you're like, okay, like I'm going to go like be a fucking actor. Like, would you just like. If the feeling's strong enough. If yeah. the feeling's strong enough. Yeah. I act on stuff like that. Yeah, it sounds like uh, you, you have to. You you think more in faith than in fear. Yeah. And they say thinking in fear is like that's where the devil lives. And mm-hmm. every negative thought you have, every yeah. fearful time in your life, it's the devil. Yeah. Thinking in faith is 2% of the world. And that 2% happens to be the, the 2%, 2% is how you become the 1%. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Alex, yeah, dude. this was an awesome podcast. Appreciate it. I appreciate you having me here on Melrose. I've never been on Melrose this late at night. <laughs> Actually, no, I have. I've been to, uh, I went to that one ramen place at 1 a.m. before. Oh, Tatsu. Tatsu ramen, yeah. yeah it's like a staple. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. amazing. Some good food on Melrose. So much good food. You guys food. are over here, 7452. Check us out. Oh, is that the address? It is, 7452. 7452. 7452, I think. Cookies and Kicks, you, they have the best graphic artist in the entire street your logo is so badass who did that uh my boy renell renell chefed it up shout He's out he's amazing Rennell. dude he does like he does a bunch of big projects man I, I can't imagine your reaction when you first saw it dude well at first i was like man is this a bit too childish i was like no brand this? but then i was like we're we're at a point where like we could take our cookies because i have like just the cookies as the logo and like that's like where you want to be i want to be able to throw that on a tee and then like People still know what it is. Yeah. So oh, I yeah. Think it's yeah. like very brandable. Like the donut uh, mm-hmm. with uh, golf. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll t- oh, before we go, I'll tell you one story I have on Melrose because the golf store is like right down there, right? Right down there. Right down there? Yeah. So before it opened, that's what, oh, it was the night we went to Tatsu. Before it opened, okay. uh, this would have been 2017. Uh huh. So we're driving down and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, do you, have you ever, I was with some girl. I was like, have you ever Tyler, heard of the creator story? Yeah. I was like, have yeah. you ever heard of golf? And she's like, no, it's like, that's Tyler, the creator story. Let's go look in there and see what's going on. Cause there's two kids standing outside. So we walk up to the window and there's a bunch of people in there. There's like, um, there's like some girl and then some guy like, uh, sweeping up the floor mm-hmm. and we're looking in there 
and the guy sweeping up the floor uh, puts the stuff in the trash can and then turns around. Tyler, the creator. Sweeping the floor. At midnight. He's just sweeping the floor. That dude, hands on. Like, I, because I, his McLaren Grinding. was parked out back. Right. Dude, that... I, I doubt anyone has ever swept a floor and then hopped in their McLaren. Yeah. <laughs> but that's why he's so successful. I mean, he's Dude, like, that's sick. He was 15 when he first drew that donut. Right. And it's crazy. It fucking worked. It's, it fucking worked. And that is why it worked. Because that mm-hmm. dude, completely sober somehow yeah. with the people he surrounds yeah. himself with. Yeah. But as that sh- drive is something that you'll never like. He has his McLaren, but he's still like clocked in. He's sweeping up the floor at midnight. Dude unreal yeah that's crazy see that's like when i think back at like my raffling shoes cleaning shoes and then door dashing at the end of the yeah. day i'm like holy shit you really I did need it. a piece of that back i lost it a little bit well you will once you get it once you start like turning to a new industry Rookie again yeah i'm saying that's what you need i appreciate it though absolutely alex thank you so much thank you for having me absolutely oh <laughs> all good yeah i knew- as long as the light's on, we're good. And his light's on, good. Shout out Junior. I literally had to import these from Canada with one day shipping. They don't sell these in America. I think I'm gonna get some suction cups for the next one. I'm still figuring this thing out. But yeah, we're all good. Mike drop literally. <laughs>